up, gang? Welcome back to Fixin' a Ride. We are on the fourth part of the 03 Arctic Cat 550 rebuild. We're gonna get this engine put back together. Like I said, this is one of the shirts I got from Arctic Cat Trail Riders, like I said in the last video, so that's the orange one. Check Mike Miller out on Facebook, of course, in the Arctic Cat Trail Riders group. Let's not waste any time. Let's just go ahead and get right into this rebuild. We're gonna put this top end in and get it banged out and get it done. So let's go. Okay, so we got everything set up and ready to go. We got the bottom end here. We got both pistons. We got new gaskets. We got new bolts. We got uh, freshly powder coated stuff. I mean, new new washers, new lock washers, new nuts. We are ready to rock. We also got new freshly coated cylinders and heads. We got the exhaust gaskets cleaned up. The intake boots, the carb to airbox boots are all cleaned up. We're ready to rock. The only thing we got to do is uh, just put everything together. So let's get to it. All right, so first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and throw these pistons on. I already got them in order. So what you're going to notice here is that I already have the circle clips in on this side. So what you want to do is always make sure that your punch mark, or sometimes it's an arrow, is facing towards the exhaust side. And then you always want to make sure that you got plenty of lubrication. I've already lubed up these bearings. We're going to go ahead and lube, up, lube these bearings up. We also have a couple of spacers here. When you install the circle clips, you want to make sure that they are up or down. Never sideways because this can compress and then they can pop out, blah, blah, blah. So it is okay if you put them in on some sort of an angle. Just make sure you got something that you can switch them with or move them over. You want to make sure that every contact surface has a little bit of oil on it at least. Like I said, punch mark towards the exhaust side or front of the engine. I like to stick my finger into the piston and then through the bearing. That helps to guide the pin all the way through there easier. And then you should just be able to push that sucker right in. All right. Easy enough. Let's move on to the next side. All right, next up, we're gonna get the rings coated in oil. We're gonna set the rings in the right position, and then we're going to put the new gaskets on, and then start with the cylinders. Okay, you got two pins, one here and one here, and you just wanna make sure that, first and foremost, you get enough lube on these rings. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. And just give it a spin. All right, now when you put the pistons in, the cylinders, you're gonna have to pinch both of these rings. So I'll usually uh, pinch them both and then just work the top one in. And then you wanna make sure that you don't get caught on the skirt of the cylinder as well. And it is a good idea to put a little tiny bit of oil on here so these don't stick, so you can reuse them. These actually feel pretty good. They feel like they have uh, not a rubber on the outside, but they feel like there's some sort of, uh, it's, it's kind of like paper, but it's it's got a real firm feel to it. And they do bend, so um, it seems like if you could kink it. So I'm not sure if there's metal on the inside of these or not, but they're definitely, they definitely feel uh, sturdy, so that's good. And typically you want the embossment to face upwards. Everybody does their stuff different. This is just how I've come to do it. For some reason, you got to take the cylinders off. The base gaskets won't stick horribly, and you should be able to reuse them. All 
All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and oil the cylinder. And hopefully I can get this to the point to where you guys can see it. It's gonna pinch the top ring. And there's one. There's two. We'll get some nuts on here and start with the heads. All right, so I got the gaskets, the new head gaskets on there. Sometimes uh, this, the center one usually fits pretty good, but the outer one, you typically will have to stretch it a little bit. Just be careful. You wanna make sure that these gaskets are sitting in here the way they're supposed to be, and they're not coming outside of the groove that they're supposed to sit in. I ended up putting a little bit of oil on each one of these gaskets, these little O-rings, so they slide. This is the order that they go in the tightening sequence. You don't have to do it now, but. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so let's put the thermostat housing on. Look at these brand new JIS, baby. These call for blue Loctite as well. I like to put this in the hole before I put the bolts on. Then the same thing here. I mean, if you want, you can put some oil on these. Just like that. You want to make sure the heads are torqued down first. That way, it, when you're tightening these down, it doesn't twist them at all and you get a good seal. I also put a tiny bit of oil on the threads of each one of these head bolts. So that was six. We're gonna go to 13. And we'll do 20. Always wanna double check on your last torque setting. At least that's my routine. And then these get torqued to six to seven foot pounds. It honestly doesn't hurt to put a little tiny bit of lube on the ceiling surface. These get a little bit of Loctite as well. Same amount of torque for these.
Okay, so before I go ahead and tighten up the cylinders here, what I want to do and what you want to do is get the Y pipe on. You want to torque it down with the base nuts not tightened up. I torqued down the cylinder heads already just so I can make sure that, that the coolant pump housing was locked in straight. So now I'm going to loosen up these heads again and then you want to tighten down these this Y pipe to both cylinders and that way the cylinders are sitting straight against this Y pipe and you know it's just a mic I mean it's very it's thousands but you just want to make sure that you'll have a good sealing right here on both of the Y pipe flanges all right so now I got the heads loosened up I'm just going to go ahead and tighten down these nuts here once I get these torqued down I'm going to go ahead and torque down the cylinder base nuts These are only 13 foot pounds, so nothing crazy. Then you want to get a 14 millimeter and tighten down all of the cylinder base nuts. I'm going to go ahead and hit these all with a little bit of red Loctite. Just want to use some 272. Doesn't have to be a crazy amount because remember you got lock washers on here. Just enough that will spread around on the threads when you tighten it down. So the torque tightening order we're going to use is pretty much the same with all these sleds here. You go one, two, three, and four. That way we can get to the rear bolts. Once again, we're going to start with the front PTO side, rear mag side, cross over to the rear PTO side, and then back to the front mag side. And we're going to bump it up to 20 foot pounds. Last round is 30 foot pounds. And you can go ahead and double check, never hurts. All right, now you can go ahead and put your heads back on. Make sure your gaskets are in the grooves where they're supposed to be. All right, so I'll get these torqued up off screen. All right, I'm gonna get these old ones off here. That was easy enough. All right, I guess we can go ahead and put these intake boots on. Japan. Let's have some corrosion on there. I'm going to hit with a wire wheel real lightly. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of B to the right stuff around the edge. to worry about any uh, air leaks. Just like that. Do the same thing the other side. Of 
course, we're going to grab a handful of new hardware. These get bolted down to 13 foot pounds, 12 to 13. Go ahead and warm these up, make sure they're all set in. That'll just help them to form to the ribs on the barbs. Not something that everybody has to do. Let's put this thing on. We'll put our gaskets first. I like to put just a little smear of the good old right stuff on there. Stuff always helps everything to seal up just right. And then the same thing on these. You want to put the inside nuts on first. Because otherwise they won't fit on. This gap right here will be too tight if you get them all the way on. If you put the outside ones on. So you have to leave some room to get those inner nuts on before you put the outside nuts on. And yes, I do use Loctite again. These get torqued to 13 foot-pounds. So once again, what I was doing there uh, is I torqued these outer ones and then I gave it a twist so I could gauge how much pressure it was. And then I twisted the inside ones, tightened those until they were snug and then put the right, put approximately the same amount of pressure. Cause it's like, they give a range as far as foot pounds to what to torque these two. So as long as you're within one or two, you're fine. So that's it. That thing looks awesome. All right, so I got the exhaust finish up. I ended up blasting it and then outgassed it, blasted it again, uh, just to make sure that I got all the oil residue up on this side out. And then I ended up hitting it with two coats of the Flame Proof 2000 degree paint header paint by VHT, and then followed it up with a nice coat of clear satin and then i hit it three different rounds in the oven once it dried i did 250 at 30 minutes 400 at 30 minutes and then uh, as high as the oven would go which is like 555 i think at 40 minutes because it called for 600 at 30 so hopefully that'll do i uh, should i think this will hold up a lot better than the last time i did it because i didn't actually cure it in the oven <laughs> So I'm going to have to redo my 800, my ZR800 Y pipe. It ended up getting a crack right here where I did not weld it. So that'll be the next one for that. But uh, yeah, it turned out really nice. So now I'm going to put the starter shaft on here. And then uh, from there, I'm going to go ahead and put the engine in after I put a new pulse line for the fuel pump on. And then once I get the engine in, I'm going to take the carburetors, clean those up. That way I can put those in. I'm going to get the secondary clutch off, clean that up. Then we're going to put this thing back together. So we got a little bit. So let's get to that stuff. All right, so we're starting to get ready to put the bindex, the starter bindex together. So we just have a C ring here. We've got ring players. And then we have a few different spacers. And basically what it comes down to is that this spring washer gets compressed in between these two other washers. So I'm 
And then we have two more pieces. We have another flat bushing and then a C-ring. And then I just put a tiny little bit of oil, just a real thin coat on both of the riding surfaces. Last piece to put on is the drive shaft. Just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of anti-seize. And the set pins are a 332nd Allen wrench there. All right, the pulse line and this thing is all cracked and nasty looking, so we're gonna put a new one on there. All right, that's all ready to go. Fuel lines are decent, so I'm not gonna worry about those. So we're gonna put on the flywheel now. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have everything. We got our three bolts for the starter cup. Obviously we got the flywheel. We got the flywheel washer, lock washer, and nut. And this is the old flywheel key. It's pretty beat up. So I got a new one of those as well. Nice and new. And then we got uh, the Half inch torque drive set to 55 foot pounds, a 10 millimeter for the three bolts, 10 millimeter socket for the three bolts, and then a three quarter or 19 millimeter socket for the flywheel nut. Gonna put a little bit of anti seize on the new flywheel key. And then I like to have the flywheel key facing upwards, and it's just a little bit easier to line up the key with the keyway on the flywheel. And you just want to make sure before you cram it on there while it's still kind of loose that you can rock it back and forth you can hear it locked on to the flywheel key and then once you got that get your washer and lock washer and then this calls for a little bit of red loctite on there i'm going to try this big hoss See if it'll fit through there. Might be uh, too big. Stick the old trustworthy pry bar in there. Yeah, someone must have really cranked it on there before so I could barely get it off. That's it. All right, I got the engine in the engine compartment. I think I'm gonna cut the video short here for now. I'm gonna get a few other things. I got a bunch of stuff going on that actually just came up. Working on a few different things here, making a few decisions. So I think I'm gonna cut it short here for now. So that's pretty much it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate you coming by and watching the videos on a regular basis. If you guys aren't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you guys get notifications to your mobile devices, your computers, wherever you are of my new uploads. So make sure you guys come on back because I'm gonna go ahead and get the carburetors cleaned up. I'm gonna put those in. I'm gonna fire, I'm gonna get this engine all together, fire it up. And then uh, I got the secondary clutch right here I'm gonna clean up. And then, uh, yeah, get this thing going. So I'm taking it, uh, you know, step by step and just trying to make it the best machine I can for the next buyer. So we'll see you guys in the next video. So take care, come on back, and as usual, guys.